Hi, this is Dr. Ben Morrill. Welcome, welcome to episode 46 of Reptile Genetics Weekly. Got a good for, one for you today. Have uh, several good updates at the beginning and then a, a cool story. The 16-year-old entrepreneur doing some reptile stuff. Um, but as always, we'll start out with uh, updates for samples coming in. And so the fast testing um, continues to be going well and more, more tests being added. We'll talk about that in just a minute what new ones we're able to do now. Um, but yeah, the, we'll have more fast test results going out tonight. And this is Tuesday. So Tuesday night, we'll have more going out. And at least one or two more times this week, we'll have more fast tests going out uh, results. And then the uh, big Illumina run that we'll be doing, um, that will start uh, this weekend. I'll be starting that. And so we'll have results probably mid to late next week. Uh, we'll be able to have all those results for you for panel tests and then for the, the few tests that we can't do as fast tests yet. So those are all coming in a little over a week. And yeah, Kayla, how are you doing? Hey, Ben, I'm doing great. Uh, I Good. am really excited for everybody to hear about uh, Xander and we'll talk okay, see our interview with Xander and uh, his family, because I wish I was doing something like this when I was 16 years old. Like it's, yeah. this kids kind of live in our dreams like so early off. So it's it's a great thing to see. I'm excited for everybody to hear about it. Um, uh, we certainly had a blast recording it yesterday, so. Yes, very, yeah. very kind, happy and uh, focused people. It's, it's good. For sure. Um, but, uh, first off we have, uh, you've been working on some more fast tests, right? Yeah. So we now are up to 13. So our goal was to be somewhere 12 to 15 by the end of February. We got to 13. So we met that goal. Nice. And we're officially halfway there. Um, Woo! I've got several more coming next week. And mm -hmm. now that I'm, uh, more, experienced in getting these to work as fast tests i expect them either all or all but maybe one to work on the first try so very got, nice um, most likely yellow belly lavender albino ultramel mojave and then lesser slash butter all of those will likely have by the end of next week and uh the goal yeah. is by sometime in yeah by sometime in april we should be able to have all 30 uh, ball python morph tests and the uh, ball python sex determination test all working as fast tests. So any of the morphs and sex determination, all of that, be able to send them in and within one to two business days, we'll get you your, your results. That'll be great. Uh, plus it's well in time, like well in time for baby season coming up too. So yes. that will be fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we'll be much better on our end too, because we don't have to don't have to tell, give people the bad news that it's going to be two weeks or three weeks or whatever till they get the results. And if yeah. something doesn't work on the first try, we're like, uh, unfortunately, we're doing our next run in like three weeks. You have to wait. But now we very now quickly won't have to do that for any of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so where are we as far as new ball python morph tests? Yeah. So now that we're finally kind of on the home stretch for switching everything over to fast testing. Mm -hmm. um, we are starting to focus more on the next uh, tests we'll be doing as new ball python morph tests. So the ones we've been close on, these first four here, we were close on, um, but I haven't been able to get them to work with the data that I have right now. Um, so we are sending more samples in. Thank, thank you to all of you that have sent more Monsoon, Monarch, TSK, and GCR, Azanthix. Um, really appreciate that. And and then my, our episode, a few episodes back, Tom Barnhart sent a whole bunch of Barnhart Black Pastel in. Um, and so now that we know that test's negative by the Black Pastel test we have now, we'll try to develop one that will pick up Barnhart. And that way we can distinguish between the two. So that will be helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, paint and Sentinel, you all have jumped on that, sent lots of Paint and Sentinel sheds. Same with acid and confusion, especially thanks to Del Richards. He sent a whole bunch in for acid. Um, awesome. Lace. I do have enough lace. I'm going to give it a try. We It might kind of be the similar situation to Monsoon and Monarch where we'll kind of be on the bubble. We, we 
50 50 chance we might get it the first try or we might need some more so if you if you have especially white lace if you have the homozygous version we can use more lace and white lace sheds um, but we're going to give it a go so perfect all right well thank you um and what about uh like non ball python morph tests where are we sitting at with that yeah so uh the other big thing we've talked about and we're working closer to like i talked about with the the talk that i gave at the genomics conference mm -hmm. made some good good contacts and had good conversations there um yeah. so genomic registry we've been hoping to get going uh looks like it's more likely it will be sooner rather than later and uh, first up on that list is ball python. That'll be really helpful. That would allow us to be able to get a shed in, do the ball python registry for it. We would be able to identify your animal as an individual. We have over 5 million variable markers for ball pythons now um, across the whole genome. So we, we would know very, very precisely <laughs> what individual we're looking at. Um, awesome. But the other cool thing is you would immediately get when that, and that this test will take a little longer because it is so comprehensive, like a month to six weeks. Um, mm -hmm. But what would happen is, or actually probably more like six to eight weeks. So it'd be like a month and a half to two months. Yeah. But you would immediately get sex and then all of the tests we currently test for. And then we would have that on for all that information. And like, you know, a few months down the road, say we get, you know, lace or whatever. Um, that test is developed, you would be able to pay some small amount and have your registry updated. And so whether it's in six months when we have two or three new tests, or if it's in two years and we have 30 new tests, whatever that is, you just pay to get that updated. And that would just go in and reanalyze your data and give you results for everything we can test for. And so that way you wouldn't have to resend in sheds if you wanted to test for something else. So, so that'll be really cool for ball pythons. Um, but then for Madagascar, yeah our ground boas and doom rolls boas. Um, the keepers for those species have wanted a, a essentially a purity test. And so we'll be able to do that here pretty soon uh, with dry mark on. Uh, Wonderful. Indigo uh, snakes. Breeders have found it very important to have as much genetic variation as they can. And so be able to do an identity test and be able to have like a relatedness test. You could get a score if you if you have all of your breeders uh, get this genome registry for all of your breeder indigos, and you could then look and see, okay, these two would give me the most genetic variation or whatever. So you'd be able to make a, with very, very high level of confidence that you are making a breeding decision that gives you the most genetic variation, so. Yeah, and I imagine that would probably do a lot for conservation efforts for the Eastern Indigo. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know uh, how many captive breeders are involved in, you know, reintroduction of that species, but I know that would go a long way toward creating a, a, stud, a stud book, essentially, uh, of, yep. of, of a sort, I guess. And um, last year I gave a talk at a, a zoo herpetological meeting where yeah. you could potentially use this for other species and zoos to be able to help with their stud books as well. So, Oh, that's incredible. And then also um, John Michaels helped provide a huge chunk of the uh, dry mark on sheds um, also has some for an azanthic line. Ooh. And be able to do some testing for azanthic and dry mark on as well. And, that would be cool. Yeah. And then uh, the last one on the list there, panther chameleons. So we've talked about this a few times in the past, but panthers with panthers, there's a really cool, really cool uh, uh, publication where they did some very specific testing through the whole range of the panther chameleon. And it makes it so we can do a test and be able to give them some information about locality. And so that's actually, I'm going to go on iPardalis uh, on their podcast tonight to talk some about, or we're at least recording, I guess. I don't know if it's going to go up today or not, but yeah, um, talk about how we can use this genomic registry um, in the future for an even higher level, deeper understanding of where these animals came from, what their history is. So pretty excited to, in 2024, I think we'll be able to get all of them on that list going, um, hopefully It'd be awesome if we can get them going the first half of 2024, but at least by the end of 2024, I think we should be able to get all four of those. That would be amazing if we could make that happen. 
Um, and you said that with locality testing, it's kind of a similar type of deal to like, you know, how they do, didn't you say like criminal investigations where they're like, yeah, this person probably comes from this region yeah. or it's kind of a similar thing oh, yeah. that you'd be doing with Panther chameleons. Yeah. chameleons. We'd be able to find markers that are always, there's already some published that are markers that are, you know, in this population and this population, but never in this population. There's that yeah. kind of information already there so um, but yeah we'll be able to stack a whole bunch on top of that over time as we run more and more panther chameleon samples and those other species we're talking about in that list too the awesome. more samples we run the better the testing will be and the more we'll be able to tell you it's kind of like if you've done 23 and me or you know yeah. something with your dog breed or whatever mm -hmm. over six months or a year or whatever as they run more they're able to tell you more information have a better test and give you more information, all that kind of stuff. That's what we're working toward. That'll be cool. Well, great. Glad to hear it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be sure to give you guys updates. Uh, there we go. We are always looking for sheds from new species. So <laughs> if we didn't have yeah. species you like, send sheds in. We can use them. And we do have quite a few for a few species like hognose and, mm -hmm. and uh, corns and boas. Few few species that we've got a few sheds in, but we can definitely use more. So always keep doing that. And if you just go to our website to help us, I'm sure Kayla will, will put that in the, in the description for this video too, but just click yeah. on help us and, on our website and it'll give you a PO box to send the sheds to. Yep. There you go. Yep. And I just pulled up a quick video. It'll show you how to do it on mobile um, on our website, which we'll have the link to it's, you can find it on all of our social media. And if you scroll down, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do for the sheds and where to send it. Yes. There we go. All right. And now I think it's time to, um, to show off the interview that we recorded uh, with Xander and his family um, of Royal X Reptiles. And they are, you'll, you'll see how cool it is. This is an awesome family. Uh, you know, wish they'd adopt me, you know, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoy. Oh, I see you have a friend. Awesome. We have a few friends ready to help us out. Good. I love that. I was actually going to uh, gonna ask if we wanted to do that today. So sweet. we have problems. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, sweet. So uh, yeah, if we, if we got you here. So excited to have you guys on here. Um, Ben's been telling me about the stuff that y'all have been doing. So uh, yeah. Um, it's definitely a family affair. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, yeah. I talked with, with both Sam and I think Xander a little bit and maybe mostly Sam, but I don't know your name. I assume mom. I'm mom, Tracy. Tracy, right. <laughs> I'm a lot of behind, behind the scenes um, kind of stuff. So, and I work with a lot of the craft shows, and um, I'm just kind of like the like we can do this and the setup person and yeah. Uh, the and the yeah. So we do like morning geckos and jumping awesome. stairs and their enclosures and other things too, and the fruit flies and. Yeah, all that stuff. So I'm, I don't, I'm I don't deal with bugs, and Xander doesn't either. So that's all her. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. Right on. What kind of isopods do you have? Because I, I have dairy cows and zebras. I love them. <laughs> I have a lot of powder orange. Um, nice. I have some duckies that are just starting. Oh, um, duckies. A couple of different styles of two bars. So, um, cool. And um, magic potions are my favorite. Yeah, Sam really likes the, the Japanese magic potions that I have, and so I pretty. actually have I actually have uh, little babies in there right now. So I'm all, oh. I'm saying, oh come look, they're so cute, and he looks and he's like, ugh, and then <laughs> no, proud of you, but I don't want to look at them. <laughs> I think they're great. They're really good mothers too. Like yeah. I have my rat snakes. They just kind of like drop some eggs and they're like peace out. Uh, yeah. Whereas isopods, you know, they actually like take care of their babies apparently yep. some species will even like uh, like you know tell other isopods off like get away from my kids and uh they'll bring them food and stuff like that's yeah. they're so cool <laughs> yeah so i definitely uh didn't know that that's where things were going to lead even a year yeah. or so ago but then we've you know done bioactive enclosures for our geckos and then you know 
how that just leads into doing the extras and well you know instead of us buying them we might as well just start doing them ourselves and yeah yeah for our snake room is now our multi-animal room <laughs> yep. nice cool. it gets kind of warm in here too yeah <laughs> oh yes oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I wanted to say thank you so much for the, the letter you sent and the, the jewelry. I do have it on here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about how it all started, how you how you all ended up um, not only doing the, the reptile stuff, but also the jewelry and, and some of the, these other offshoots uh, that you're doing. Yeah. I love animals and when i was younger all of us always went to the zoo and to the reptile house mm -hmm. then we started going to reptile shows and when i was eight i got my first uh, ball python bella when mm -hmm. i was nine yeah his name was fella bella 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 oh bella. cute she's actually a breeder female now that we use yeah cool oh, that's awesome he fell in love with her and held her the whole ride home from Indianapolis. Aww. And he actually would read to her at night. Actually, um, they have some of those pictures. Okay, yeah, there's a picture yeah. that you have of him reading. Let's but see. he would read all sorts of yep. different things. But yeah. he would even read like snake and reptile books to her to Aww. let her know what, you know, about her people. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. I on. love that. Yeah. It was really, really great. And she's about 3,000 grams now. Oh, so big girl. Big, Our big yeah. girl. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Wow, uh, that's yeah. Um, I think you sent us, um, did you want to go through some of the other pictures? Because I've got them in other slides, but we can just pull those up as needed, too. I mean, um, yeah. There's, whatever you want to do. There's the one with the, I think he's like uh, making the jewelry. And so. Yeah. Basically, Sam and Xander had come across Emily's video from Snake yeah. Discovery of yep. making a jewelry, and they figured, "Hey, we have boxes of sheds, so let's give it a try." And so yeah. you made your first necklace, and you gave it to someone special, right? I gave it to my grandma. Yeah, Aww. and she loved it, and this is extremely supportive of everything that he wants to do or that we want to do. And she said, you know, I think this could be something that people would be interested in. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of taken off from there. He started out just doing like the small disc like this. Yeah. Um, and then he started doing like the one that Ben has with the longer. And then she al yeah, he also started doing like the one with like the crystals. Um, yeah. So he's That's kind cool. of started to kind of like get out of just the standard circle mm -hmm. um we do a lot more with it yeah yeah he's actually no. done for two weddings um he's done jewelry for two weddings uh that really? people reached out for us and that's i think that's really cool um one yeah. case the person purchased the snake from mm -hmm. us and wanted to include the snake in the wedding and have jewelry made for the whole party and then in another case, a lady that does dog rescues just heard about us through, you know, animal chain type of thing. And she said, I'm not really super into snakes, but I think that what you guys are doing is super cool. And animals are, you know, I support people that love animals. And yeah. so she asked us to do a wedding for her wedding. Right. Because we're actually part, we actually affiliate with like Arrowhead Reptile Rescue which is here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. That's, That's cool. where Xander actually got his first setup for his first ball python. Yeah. Awesome. But, and we still do like, like if somebody wants to turn something in, we'll actually usually, you know, you know, make sure we're like the middle contact for, you know, the sending rescue. People, sending so. people to them and helping them out because they helped Xander out when we first started. Yeah. Oh. Very cool. That's yeah. wonderful. It's definitely a like sounds like you've got a nice little community thing going on there. Uh that's that's too cool. Also, I've I've seen a bunch of different reptile like cabochon style shed jewelry, but that's yours is definitely the favorite that I've ever seen. I'm, I'm probably gonna order something. So, <laughs> so 
That's awesome. We about, like Tegu looks the best. Yeah, Tegu shed really? looks really cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we don't have a Tegu, so we only get the sheds from people that do special orders. Yeah. And they, they go so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I never would have thought about Tegu sheds. Yeah. yeah. Olive Python looks really cool too. We weren't quite expecting it to take off as quickly as it did. So Sam's actually put together some. Um, like fixturing and stuff that he can actually do 20 plus pieces at a time because we were kind of one at a time holding it down with our finger oh, or taping no. it. So, <laughs> yeah you know and so yeah so it really evolved um and we've really like honed it to be i mean i think really beautiful pieces yeah. of art that people wear yeah so yeah that's too cool <laughs> uh, what, was, what other species have you tried doing sheds with uh for the cabochon jewelry Bearded rat. dragon, yeah. rat snakes, a la python, any colubrid. Um, cool. I mean, yeah. pretty we, much. We've, we, done... we've even done like vials for like uh, crested geckos, like mm -hmm. when you just have like the piece of the tail just yeah. for, you know, people to take. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> you, we keep like we're talking. We're the talkers. So, we're the talkers. <laughs> so, <laughs> we shows. Xander does all. A lot of like you know the, the housekeeping and the husbandry and when it comes to the shows outside he does a lot of the educational shows so he'll actually you right. know, have all pythons with him or the gecko mm -hmm. or tarantula or the pixie frog or any of that and he'll teach kids about like how to take care of them how to handle them yeah. so he likes that portion of it he doesn't like the marketing part of it <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, I mean, I, I for myself when I was younger, I had a hard time, you know, speaking up in front of people or uh, like a video or something like that. So I understand. Um, mm -hmm. And for him to have the snake in hand, you know, gives that comfort for him to to talk about that with someone. And like I said, the lady that he um, sat down with, and she came back, you know, to actually like touch the snake for the first time. Aww. You start to see him come out of his shell. Mm -hmm. And um, that one on one interaction that he gets with people, not just I'm here to get you to purchase a, 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 right. a necklace. Right. So um, we all kind of play a role um, at whatever show that we're at. And we try to let each one of us, you know, really do what it is that we excel in. Um, and every once in a while, it's like, hey, I need you to get up here and, and talk to someone about this. Uh, but yeah, like. Xander really excels with the one-on-one -on -one kind of like connection that he has uh, with people at the shows. And I know Sam and I really enjoy watching him. Um, connect yeah. with people. Cool. You guys must be really proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> also being able to establish a one-on-one -on -one connection is so important. And yeah. I, I get it. Like when you're holding an animal, like, and someone asks you about it, you're like, I can share my passion. Easy. Exactly. Let's go. So. Yeah. That's exactly. uh, that's wonderful. Exactly. So glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah. he was. A, we we were so proud. So last year he was actually featured on Channel Twelve News. Yeah. Yeah. So he actually had an an own his own write up on Channel Twelve, which is really All cool. Right. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. Uh, what but, did you guys talk like talk about, or was it just general like your educational um, things? It was just general about him being a young entrepreneur. Right. Nice. It's kind of like a one slide type of uh, click, you know, for folks to do if they're on the website. So, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty neat. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Cool. It's really exciting. And it looked like <laughs> in the pictures, you, you've gotten to meet some pretty cool people in the industry as well. Yeah. So who are some of the folks that you, I mean, there's the, there it is. <laughs> but, Welcome. Yeah. 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 Justin. Justin. So he's he's signing an autograph for you. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Mark is actually one of the original people that we spoke with. Yeah. So his first snake that he ever purchased was from Mark Bailey. Yeah. Okay. And oh, and it was cool. behind Vincy Orange Dream. And then let's see, do you have your mustache picture up there with Emily? 
I'm so I, jealous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Kayla missed funny. out when Ed and Emily came to video. She didn't get to be there for that. So. Oh, no. <laughs> They're well, super nice people. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. everybody in the reptile community is pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, it's been oh, yeah. It's been pretty awesome. I mean, we haven't had any issues whatsoever. So it's wonderful. I forget who is we talked to, but someone else said that they started out by doing jewelry as well. Uh, so early on, Justin was it Justin mentioned that he actually started out doing like reptile shed stuff. Not not exactly the same type, but just the fact of kind of like doing something with the shed. Right. I thought that was pretty neat that you know, like twenty something years earlier, and kind of like started off uh, in yeah. a similar fashion. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Awesome. I see uh, Dave Kaufman there too. Yep. Yeah. My mom was so jealous. She was, she was there. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. We also talked to Clint too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you talked to Clint. Clint. Like, oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. So is this at uh, like a Tinley show, I guess? Yeah. Multiple Tinley shows. So we try to go once a year. I think they're just trying to figure out when the best time would go uh, as us actually vending right. uh, Tinley for the first time. So kind of building mm -hmm. up, um, um, you know, this is the third year for, like you said, third year for pairings. And so we'll have, you know, have even more uh, hatchlings, you know, this upcoming year. So, you know, yeah. what point is it to kick off kind of one of the bigger shows and not just the, the local ones that are within right. an hour and a half or two um, from where we live. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, we only have this year. We only have three babies even left of the last season. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well done. How many did you start off with? We had thirty-two. Thirty-two. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of babies. Yeah, yep. good that's job. That's a confidence <laughs> builder for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah, you said exciting. this is only your your third breeding year, so that's really well done. Yeah, yeah, this is just the start of it. So that was just two years of actually um, having clutches. So yeah, yeah, good for you guys. <laughs> oh yeah. So you said you brought some props today. Yeah. So right. this is Freya. She is actually our first, actually our first one ever out of the egg. <laughs> Keeping her, she was the only female out of the whole clutch. Oh, uh, she's gorgeous! And we had her check through RGI, and we mm -hmm. found out she's head hypo. So. All right, <laughs> well, she's beautiful, and uh, so that's that's cool that you got to keep the very first hatchling from yeah. her. First. She was she was over a hundred grams right out of the egg. Wow, wow. that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. big. Big baby for sure. Big, baby. Big, 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 healthy, robust, and uh, yeah. has she started breeding for you guys yet? Or no, no, no not yet. Yeah. We wait until fifteen hundred grams at Smart. least. So yeah, fair enough. Oh, she is so pretty. And what uh, I, I'm still not super great with my ball python morphs yet. What uh, what morph is she? So we thought that she was orange drink. Who would but, think so with how orange she is? But she came back that she was not orange dream. Oh. So we thought that it might have been the high intensity orange dream. Mm -hmm. But we're not sure how that's going to come back. So yeah. Um, we think that she could be just a pastel super vanilla because of how the head stamps kind of blushed out. Mm -hmm. And then she came back in she and then had hypo. So We'll see. <laughs> we'll yeah. put her with something that's probably just a recessive gene. That way we can make sure that we know what we're dealing with. There yeah. you go. So. That's cool. Yeah, and that's one of them that you're going to send the parents' sheds to, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll send those again. Yeah. Um, make sure we know right. exactly what's going on. But whatever she is, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then this is actually our main male from last year and this year. Ooh. So this is Professor X. Professor X. Yeah. Oh, so all the banana. babies were named after the X-Men. Yeah. This year. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So he's the Barnhart line black pastel, uh, female maker banana, 
leopard, yellow belly clown. Wow. Very cool. He's pretty. Yeah, yeah. he's he's pretty big. He's about yeah. 1,800 grams. Big he's boy. And then. So we showed you the first one that um, Dana produced. And now from, um, from what we have left in this, um, this current season, here's what it is that we so, got this year. And these were actually checked through RGI also. Oh. So this one is a blackhead Barnhart black pastel um, clown banana clown, and then we thinking we're thinking that she's possible red gene and possible ringer gene with the bottom coming up like that. Cool. Um, so we're thinking the ringer genes in there with the blackhead, yeah. whereas this one is the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just with leopard. Oh, they're pretty. It's, I love that, it, like tan, almost buckskin kind of look to them. That's beautiful. They really changed. Yeah, since they were pretty bright orange when they first came out of the egg, and they're like turning more of the purple <laughs> and silver. Ooh, which is really cool. Oh, that's nice. A lot of spots coming in yeah. too. Yeah, too cool. Well, those are some nice ones to still have. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and so are those your holdbacks for for the future, or are those still some of the babies that you're trying to find homes for? So they're on morph market. If they don't sell, we don't we're okay it. with it. Yeah, we don't have a, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the brother actually just sold, and that was um, basically what the last one was, mm-hmm. just a heck clown and without the banana. So, All right. and he like jet black. So it's very Ooh. different looking yeah. at the two together. It was always cool to me, mainly with our first clutch that we got, that they were all related, but they all looked completely different. Yeah. 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 And that so. surprises a lot of people too. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. folks that don't necessarily breed them and they come up and they look and you're like, Oh, this, you know, these are all clutch mates, and they're like, Are you kidding me? They look so different. So, <laughs> the genetic yeah. is really amazing that, that Xander's gotten into. Honestly, um, what got me even more passionate about it because Sam is, has always been into snakes and reptiles and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, Okay, yeah, if you guys want to do this, but kind of going to stay in the background because I'm not real <laughs> sure about this myself. But they're beautiful, and I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Um, but when Xander started talking to him about the genetics and sharing with me, if we put this one and this one together, you know, we could get this or other people put these together and get this. And mm-hmm. um, there's responsible ways to do the breeding. You know, you want to make sure yeah. that you're going to have something that has issues, known issues and things mm-hmm. like that. But, mm-hmm. but that's actually what sold me was I couldn't believe the science that he was learning and the things that he was mm-hmm. learning. It was. It went way beyond what it is that I thought of. Like, oh, they're just going to buy two snakes and and pair them together. And so I just I thought that was amazing. Um, so I mean, I learned I learned a bunch too that I was not expecting at all. Well, I now. think it, that his teacher was like, you know, you should probably go in the next one up. <laughs> oh yeah, his science teacher this year um, was like, you should be way beyond where it is that you are now. Like, I just need to keep bumping you up. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, yeah. he said that he's like, I'm kind of bored, bored in science. I've already gone through a lot of stuff and learned a lot of this stuff on my own anyway. And yeah. he is an almost straight A student. He works on his homework when he gets home Saturday mornings. He's already working on it by the time we come downstairs for breakfast. Um, he's just a model student. Um, he's involved in golf and bowling and choir. Uh, men's choir. And, All right. Uh, he's just we're we're so proud of him, like in so many uh, avenues, and he's wonderful with um, young children, nieces, and nephews. Um, his grandparents, he's uh, gentle and loving, and um, he's got a huge giving heart. He's wonderful with animals. 
Um, I just, I know everyone feels that way about their children. I can't say enough about the person that I can tell that he's going to be um, the young man that he is right now. I just, I know that he's going to do just really wonderful things. When we twenty, I actually had a hip replacement and it didn't go very well. I ended up having a lot of back issues from it. And he was basically my nurse yeah. because school was out because of 2020 and yeah. you know, homeschooling. So he was basically helping take care of me. Yeah. He would get his um, schoolwork done early in the morning while I was still able to be here until I went to work. And I would help Sam out during that time. And then when I would leave for, you know, nine plus hours a day, then Xander took care of Sam. And I never heard a complaint out of him. He spent um, one summer also taking care of his uh, grandparents, my parents. And just, I mean, not a complaint out of him. I mean, just, and my, my dad wanted to pay him for, you know, helping with things and doing jobs around the house and um, Xander would not take the money from him even. Um, so I mean, he just really is a caring, uh, caring young man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you stay plenty busy. You don't have any time to get into trouble. So that's good. That's no, true. I don't, I don't worry about him at all. No. <laughs> keep other people out of trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's hey, good. That's, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, Which is nice. he's got a good friend and um, yeah. that he goes to church with the, the youth group um, through church. And uh, he was there last night with her and they're just uh, his friends are good, like just good young adults, too. And um, Dungeons and Dragons play. Yeah, yeah the He's a typical teenager, you know, video games and things like that. But um, yeah. in the board games, he loves trying different card games out uh, we'll go and uh just pick a different game i'm the rule person i have to read the rules and make sure that everyone is sticking to them um but he loves trying different games out and that's a that's a lot of fun for all of us in the family so that's yeah. awesome <laughs> and the uh interacting with other people doing other things is a good way to get even more people to understand reptiles better <laughs> Definitely. What do your classmates think of uh, like, because I imagine when you're in like your science or biology classes, you know, you'll bring up what you do there, especially since your teachers know all the things you're doing. Like, how do your classmates react to it? So I actually talked to one of them earlier about it. And they didn't believe me even after I told the teacher. So, long so a lot of them don't believe it, even though they've seen it. <laughs> and it just astounds them. It's really cool to them. And yeah, yeah. During, during COVID, you usually would uh, have oh, a yeah. snake like around his neck, and then it uh, even the teacher would be like, "What? What is that?" And everyone else is showing their dog, you know, or something. Yeah. Like, I this is my cat. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I have a giant pixie frog, and I have these snakes and geckos and things like that. And I think awesome. Think that. Like, he's pretty cool, pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing we definitely wanted to have you do, and if you all three are, are willing to do it, maybe all three of you can do it individually. But if you could just tell us, like, in, a, a, you know, just a few sentences why you do this. You know, you've kind of told us some stories already, but we have Kayla's segment as our why I do this segment. So mm -hmm. we wanted maybe if you could just put it into you know, two or three sentences, what's what's the, the number one reason why you like working with the, the reptiles? I want to educate people on why they're so good in the environment and why people need to take care of them. They're great pets and <laughs> they're really easygoing too. And it's really nice to just have them. I love all animals and you can have as many of these as you want. I mean, <laughs> they can be a lot of fun. As long as your parents are as cool as your parents, anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned snake math, and I um now I understand how that happens. <laughs> snake math, yeah. <laughs> so I love it just because it brings the family closer. You know, um, there's those days where. We go to some of the shows where I know he doesn't really want to get up at four o'clock in the morning, 
But, you know, it's once we're there and we start talking and interacting and goofing off because we're a bunch of goofballs, we really are. And uh, it's just, it's like that, those family moments that you will remember forever, you know. And I really have really had a passion for reptiles since I was a kid. I mean, I remember when I was, you know, 10 years old going in the backyard and catching garter snakes by the piles, you know. And then, um, you know, I actually worked at the Cincinnati Zoo as a volunteer for mm-hmm. a couple of years. And cool. I was like around the reptile house. And, you know, I did some of the like, you know, showing off some of the snakes and stuff. So I actually wanted to go to school for herpetology. But, you know, I ended up becoming a machinist <laughs> and then eventually becoming an engineer. So. All right. But passion's still there for animals and reptiles. Cool. I mean, for me, it's um, it's seeing the education that Xander's receiving from it, the education that he's sharing with other people. Like I mentioned, um, I would have never thought that I was going to say snakes are my thing, right? Um, but I have passions as well, and Sam and Xander are, are supportive of me. We have other animals that we didn't even mention, um, like my ferrets, one of which is uh, death. And oh. a tenant, and um, well, the jumping spiders we mentioned, but lots of them are pets for me as well. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, sharing uh, my passion and them supporting it is the same as you know me supporting the passion that they have. Um, from a business perspective, I mean, Xander has learned about um, the budgeting and the taxes yeah, and taxes. the expenses. Yeah. That, you, know, you know, the expenses that happen before the money actually starts. Um, being positive, you know, and 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 sometimes you don't get paid at the end of the day, you know, um, and the insurance and everything like that. But he's got a really great grasp, a better grasp, I think, than what a lot of maybe even adults <laughs> have sometimes right. about what you know what happens and what goes into a business and everything like that. And um, how could I not support that? I mean, why would I not want to support that? Yeah, so, excellent learning learning real life skills and yeah. also doing it as a passion and a job right before you're even out of high school. Like that's so cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he, uh, he bought his first uh, new to him vehicle when he was um, 15 wow. and the business has helped him be able to make his payments on his, uh, his vehicle every month. And, it will probably be paid off a little early. So his focus has been his he's got a great focus on managing the money and and really what it is like this is what you know for, for me to be able to go to college or you know get a job, you know, and continue on like these things, money needs to be set aside for these things. And he's got a very good head on his shoulders and an understanding of what what should happen. That is awesome. Yeah. That's great experience to get at such a young age. That's for sure. For real. For sure. <laughs> well, uh, what what's the uh, what's yeah. the best way for people to watch this? What's the best way for them to see your jewelry? See what animals you have available? Is it website or Facebook or mostly Facebook? They can also reach us through Instagram. Mm-hmm. But, and of course, mostly Facebook. And of course, on Morph Market. Yep, Morph yeah. Market. All right. And everything yeah. is under Royal X Reptiles? Yes, it is. Yes. Awesome. I'll be sure to throw the links in there uh, when we post this out of, as a video, either on its own or uh, as a tag on to tomorrow's episode. I'll be sure to put your social media down there as well so people okay. can go check it out. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we so appreciate you. Me. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you yeah. taking the time and and for the not only did he send this uh, this jewelry, <laughs> but you wrote a very uh, very kind and uplifting letter. I, I appreciated that too. That's very cool. Yeah. I don't don't get. We do get some notes here and there from people. Yours was was more detailed and it was a very very kind letter. I appreciate it. And yeah, just really really appreciate you taking the time. And it's really nice to see. You know, families doing something together, a lot of positive energy and helping people around. Uh, it would be nice if more of the the news that we see each day was more this kind of information rather than what makes it into normal news. 
There's yeah. lots of people that mm-hmm. do lots of really good things too. And so really thank you, Xander and, and family. It's it's really, really awesome to see this. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I, I guess, um, is it, do we have anything else before we call it a night? Not that I can think of. I think, I think that's I it. Think that's it. Yeah, I mean, I could keep, I could keep going on and on and glowing about it. If <laughs> <want> to, but... <laughs> As parents should, you know. <laughs> so right. oh, I'm going to do a shout out to my mom and my dad. <gasps> yeah. Me and Papa because they will spend all day watching YouTube videos and they watch Clint and, and everything oh. else. Oh, they nice. will out when they actually like, you know, know that we did a little shout out for them. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you guys again. And uh, I, I'll, well, I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit end for the recording here. So thank y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And that was the interview. Yeah, They are one. such a cool family. Yeah, I love all the smiles and positive, you know, there's so much negativity in the news and things like that. But really, there's a lot of people doing cool things that they're excited and passionate about and just want to help other people learn what it is they're excited about. And people spent more time focusing on that. The whole world would be a happier place. (laughs) I think so. All right. Um, well, thanks everybody for watching today. Uh, hope you enjoyed the um, interview with, Zan- with Xander and his family of Royal X Reptiles. Uh, be sure to go support them on their social media um, and uh, like, comment, subscribe on this video. Go co- do the same on their stuff. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Outro in three, two, one. Uh, once I can find the, the clip. Hang on, hang on. Okay, now. Thank mm-hmm. you.